From the summer of 2006 to the summer of 2012, the U.S. experienced its worst housing decline since the Great Depression. It was an event that reshaped the planet, causing a severe recession that spread beyond America's borders, seeping into countries across the globe. While historians, analysts, journalists, and movie directors love to focus on the crash itself, what nobody talks about are the years before the decline. The bubble era, a stretch of time where U.S. home prices slowly rose and then exploded in the years following 2002. Real estate became the center of the new modern-day gold rush, with prices going up daily, leaving buyers frustrated, confused, and angry. If this is starting to sound familiar, you're not alone. For most of us, there is no denying that this market has seen prices gradually rise following the 2012 crash and then suddenly explode following the events of 2020. The majority of the public is well aware that nothing about this market is normal. It's simple. This right here, right now, is the new bubble. And as we look back, it seems to be entering its final stage. A stage that centers on speculation, investment, and greed. You see, prior to the last crash, there were actually plenty of people warning of the imminent doom that was coming for the housing market. Hollywood will have you believing that it was only this guy who caught it beforehand, but as it turns out, plenty of prominent investors and even regular people were well aware that the market was in a massive bubble that was ready to implode. One of those people was the world's greatest investor, Warren Buffett. During the 2006 Berkshire Annual Meeting, very close to the peak of the last bubble, Warren was asked about residential real estate and whether or not he thought it was in a bubble. And what you're about to see and hear is eerily similar to what is occurring right now across the United States. Not only does Warren outline the dangers, he also correctly points out that it's not regular people who are to blame. It's speculative real estate investors who are operating using extreme leverage and greed, a deadly combination that he correctly predicted would lead to an implosion. Take a listen that from time to time, even in great localities, you've seen it happen in New York a couple of times, you know, in the last 30 years, where the, the swing in properties values has just been huge. And what we see in our residential brokerage business, and we're in, I don't know how many different states, is we see a slowdown every place. Now, we see it most dramatically in some of the, what have been the hottest markets. And the markets where you're going to, in my view, you're likely to see the greatest fall off and where you've had the biggest bubble are the ones that tend to be the high end market and they tend to be ones where people have bought for investment or speculation uh, rather than use. $100,000 for a house and mortgage it for 270000 and if the value goes to two hundred and fifty, if they have a job and everything, they, they won't move out. I mean, that the... You don't lose a lot of money, even though the market value on a given day is less than the loan value when families stay together and employment uh, is present and all that. But, but when you have in investment type holdings or speculation type holdings, when you in effect have had the day traders, you know, of the internet move into the day trading of, of condos, uh, then you, then you get then you get transact then then you get a market that can move in a big way. First, it sort of stops, and then it kind of reopens. Now, what does Warren concentrate on in his answer? It's investors who have turned the real estate market into the penny stock market, abusing leverage and concentrating on flips as if they were day trading on their computer. Look around at the data and you'll see that in the last two years, we have seen investor activity spike the numbers we have never seen before. And a lot of these investors are using speculative funding methods that aren't reported on. This includes risky loans and fraudulent loans. Outside of this, as you just heard Warren say, the real estate market is an extreme example of the law of the vital few. Unlike stocks, which trade on a live market Monday through Friday, giving you a constant live look at prices, homes sell based on comps that are often based on a very few number of transactions. As the outline, you may think your home is worth a certain price because somebody down the street sold a home similar to yours for some price months ago. This is a very poor way to measure value as it's subject to massive quick drifts in both directions. 
It only takes a few bad sales to reprice a whole neighborhood, and it's why crashes in real estate can happen so suddenly out of nowhere. For example, he mentions how these investors really only need one person to buy at their price, and because real estate prices are so gray, there is always an element of cope in the market. All it takes is one out of the loop buyer to keep an entire neighborhood afloat, but once word is out on the downfall, it can be pretty rapid as investors jump to get out once the knife begins to fall. You can see this behavior take place in countless markets in 2007. For example, in Phoenix, there were many months where prices fell over 5% in a single month. That means a $300,000 house lost over $15,000 in value in just 30 days. In fact, in Phoenix, during the dark days of 2008, a typical home from March 2008 to March 2009 lost 37% of its value in just one year. And that's just a metro-wide average. If you talk to agents or investors who were operating during that period in Phoenix, the damage to specific neighborhoods was even worse. There were many instances where in one year a home would lose over 60% of its value, wiping out the investor who bought it. You see, at the end of the day, all of this bubble-like behavior where you have a massive price swing to the upside is almost always followed up by an implosion of some sort. And the root cause is always dumb lending to greedy people. Today, we see countless examples of investors receiving loans to purchase struggling Airbnbs, money losing flips, and negative cash flow rentals. It's the same story repeating again. During the same Berkshire conference that I showed previously, Warren and Munger were asked about these exact lending conditions and how they always result in the same outcome. Take a listen to their comments, but before I show you, please just take two seconds to hit that like and subscribe button if you're enjoying the content thus far. Every single like is fuel for the algorithm to push this video, and I would greatly appreciate your help. Now, back to Warren. I also think that some of the sin that was in the manufactured housing finance a few years ago has shifted into the finance of the stick-built houses. There is a lot of ridiculous credit being extended in America in the housing field. And uh, it had a horrible aftermath in the manufactured housing sector. And my guess is there'll be some trouble in the Stick belt sector in due course. Well, dumb, lend d dumb lending always has its consequences, and usually on a big scale because you don't see it for quite a while. So therefore, it's it's like a disease that doesn't manifest itself for you know a few weeks, and and uh, you can have an epidemic of something like that, and and what, by the time you know you have an epidemic, you're you're very well into it. Well, that's what happens in in dumb financing, and and you had that. You periodically get it, but you certainly had it in commercial financing in the 80s, and you had the RTC and the savings and loan crisis and all of that because literally one dumb project was put up after another. A, a developer will develop anything he can borrow the money against. You know, I mean, that, it's it's that simple. And and when the when the inst lending institutions pour the money out for something, it will get built. Ultimately, at the end of the day, this bubble we see developing here is very similar to the one that developed in the early 2000s. Sure, the conditions may not be exactly the same as before, but as the saying goes, history doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes. Bad loans funding speculative investors in various hotspots throughout the country are fueling the massive price swings we have seen in the past few years, and eventually this massive top will turn violently. As outlined earlier, the problem with housing crashes is that things don't typically go up or down slowly. When the market turns, it turns suddenly, and it can be very frustrating during this long, miserable ride up. The steeper the gains, the more inclined we are to believe that the other side of the hill will be just as steep. Thank you guys for watching. As always, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed it. And as always, leave a comment below telling me about the things you're seeing in your local market.